headlight situation on our 2013 Altima has gotten pretty bad over the years to the point where the car isn't really safe and it's almost undrivable at night. Tell me, can you guys spot this deer off to the right? Well, in real life, I didn't see it till it was about 5 feet ahead of me and if you're going at any real speed and if that deer were to jump out, it, it'll be too late. Now I'm using two cameras, so the first one is my expensive camera inside the car and you're gonna see me turn my headlights on and off right now because at this point I wasn't even sure if they were on. This camera, apparently I just found this out while I was editing, is fantastic in low light situations so this is not at all what it really looks like in person. Here goes the second camera which is a GoPro mounted to the windshield and I will admit that it is a bit exaggerated, it doesn't look this dark but the GoPro is a better representation of what it really looks like driving this car at night. You're going to see the same exact spot where I turned my headlights on and off because like I said I really couldn't tell if the headlights were even on at all. Oh and by the way did you spot that deer? Of course you didn't. So the next shot is the same exact night I'm pulling into our house right here right in front of the garage and it doesn't look that bad right but again this camera is a bit deceiving. So as we get closer to the garage you can see the beam of light that's hitting the garage door and that's absolutely pathetic. Here goes the other shot from the perspective of the GoPro and this is more realistic of what it really looks like driving this car. It's pretty awful if you ask me and if you have one of these Altimas you know exactly what I'm talking about because apparently this has turned into a class action lawsuit against Nissan. But anyway enough talking let's go ahead and fix this. And if we take a closer look at the headlights, they're not heavily oxidized. That usually happens from the UV rays from the sun. Uh, there is a little bit of discoloration, but nothing major. Now, initially, when we first ran it or I first noticed this problem, I thought it was just weak light bulbs. So I bought a set of HIDs, an expensive brand. It cost me like $200 and it did not fix it. This is before I knew what the actual problem was. It is, in fact, the headlights. Now, we're going to start by removing this plastic cover right on top of the bumper where the latches for the hood. I like to use a panel prying tool, but you could easily just use a small flathead screwdriver like I just showed you. Now these plastic push-ins, they can sometimes get stuck. So here I am using silicone spray, but you could easily just use something like WD-40. The little bit of lubricant sprayed into these plastic pins goes a long way and it really helps to remove all of them without breaking them because at this age, they're pretty old and brittle and they do have a tendency to break. Now I'm going to start on the driver's side. You can see there are three 10 millimeter bolts right here on top. Go ahead and zip them out. They should come out pretty easy. And right next to the fender, just like a small flap, you could go ahead and pull this back and there's gonna be another bolt kind of hidden back here. So go ahead and remove that. Now keep in mind, everything is gonna be mirrored. So whatever we do on the driver's side, you have to do the same exact thing on the passenger side. So now let's go over to the passenger side and do the same exact steps. The only thing different on this side is a small push-in clip for the windshield washer bottle. We'll go ahead and remove that as well. Now we can move on to the side of the bumper. There's going to be another hidden 10 millimeter bolt that has to come out. We're just going to go ahead and peel back this fender liner. Uh, it's just made out of plastic, so just push it back to get it out of the way. And there goes that bolt that we have to remove. With that bolt removed, you can actually go ahead and peel the bumper away from the fender. You're going to have to give it a good few pulls and uh, don't be scared to do this. I know it looks like you're going to break something, but uh, just try to be careful with it. Don't go caveman style on it and give it a, a nice few tugs and it should pop away. So here we are on the other side of the car repeating the same exact process. It should look something like that. 
and now we can move on to the underside of the bumper and i'm just going to remove the uh like button head screws they use a phillips there's going to be three on the driver's side and three on the passenger side now i'm actually missing one right here on the passenger side so i just skipped it and this is what those screws look like once you got all of those screws out of the bumper, we're gonna move to the center of the bumper and these are all 10 millimeter bolts that have to come out. As you can see, one of those 10 mils is pretty much stuck in place. It's rusted in place, so we'll just come back to it later. I'm sure it's gonna end up breaking off. And of course, it ripped off the plastic right off of the bumper. There's an easy way around this. Just grab a set of pliers and you're actually going to hold what the bolt goes through. And then you could just use your impact gun or just a regular ratchet and unscrew the bolt. Not a big deal. At this point, all of the fasteners that are holding the bumper onto the car have been removed, so it's kind of like peeling back layers of an onion right now. As you can see, I'm trying to separate the bumper from the fender, and this is a perfect time. If you have someone to help you, get that person to help you. It's not absolutely necessary, as you can see, I'm doing it by myself, but it does make the job a little bit easier if you got someone to support the other side of the bumper while you uh, wiggle, jiggle, and move things around, trying to get the bumper to separate. So just kind of work both sides of it going back and forth, and eventually the whole bumper is going to come right off. This is the part where a second person is really helpful because they could support the bumper while you reach inside of here and disconnect any connectors that go to the fog lights or I think even the turn signals. And uh, it, it just helps when you got a second person. Now, as far as the connectors for these bulbs, I find it a lot easier to just turn them counterclockwise and remove the connector with the bulb and all intact rather than trying to unplug the connector because it can be difficult with the grime and the grit that's stuck inside the connectors, it just turns into a pain in the butt. I, I think it's much easier to just remove the whole bulb like I did. And once you get the bulbs completely unplugged, that's it, it's a done deal. The bumper is yours and you can completely remove it now. And because I know I'm gonna get this comment in the comment section about uh, you know unplugging the bulbs in the bumper before you actually start removing the bumper, that's fair. You could come from the bottom of the bumper and just remove it. That could be easier for a lot of people, honestly. Now it's time to remove the headlights and I'm only going to show you one side because it's the same for both sides. There's a few uh, 10 millimeter fasteners back here and the one that's in line with the peak of the uh, headlight, that's the one you have to remove. There's going to be another one down here. There's a total of four of these by the way. So let's go ahead and get this one out the way. This is going to be the second 10 mil. And the third one is going to be right underneath the headlight. And the final one is going to be on the side of the headlight, right underneath the fender. And just like I mentioned for the bulbs going into the bumper, it's way easier to just turn them counterclockwise and remove the bulbs complete with the harness instead of trying to separate that connector. Not to mention, I took a look at the new headlights and they don't come with bulbs, so you're going to have to reuse your old one anyway. Uh, these clips that go into the headlight are really easy to remove with some needle nose pliers. You just come from the back side of them and squeeze the two little tabs with your pliers and they should pop right out. And now the headlight is completely disconnected from the car. At this point, you should have both of your headlights removed and the front of your car should look like you just got into a front end collision. So at least you know you're doing the job right. Let's take a look at that new headlight. So satisfying peeling off that plastic, right? Come on, baby, give it to me. Yes, 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 go, go. On the back side of the new headlights here, I am removing these adhesive pads, if you want to call them that. 
And before anyone asks me where I got these headlights from, I got them off of Amazon. I'll see if I can find a link to them and I'll put it in the description below. Here I am putting some oil on some of the spots where the bolts are going to go back in because I felt like they were a little bit rough coming out. So the oil is going to help when we're putting everything back together. At this point, just start plugging in any of your light bulbs and all the connectors that go into the back of the headlight. And I'm just going to put one bolt in place just to hold the headlight assembly in place so it doesn't fall off while I'm testing it. At this point, I just want to make sure everything works. And I shouldn't have to say this, but this is the perfect time to replace any light bulbs that are out. And I actually noticed that like the side marker bulbs are out on this car. You can see it's where that orange reflector is at. And as you can see, I just replaced them. I had some uh, new bulbs right here in my uh, collection. So I popped out the one on the left and the right side. They were actually both burnt out. And there goes that one now working. And here goes the one on the right or the passenger side working as well. Take advantage of this guys because it is not easy to change bulbs on these cars. Of course you can do it without removing the bumper but it's just super easy right now. So that's pretty much all the hard work done. So I'm just going to go ahead and fly through everything and put everything right back together. And we'll kind of wrap this thing up. Let me show you guys some before and after. And uh, for you guys who are sticking around I'll show you what the inside of the old headlight looks like and why it stops working. Now that the front end is put back together, turning on the headlight, you can see that the right headlight is considerably higher than the left. So what I'm going to do is I had an option here, either raise the left side or lower the right side. So I decided to lower the right side, which turned out to be not a great idea. But it's what I did because you got to start somewhere, right? So I need to show you how to adjust your headlights. And I thought the easiest way to do this is to use the old headlight as an example. So you would come in here from the top with your Phillips number two screwdriver. And you can see right there on that dial, I used the Sharpie to put a mark on it. Now, as you turn your screwdriver, you're going to raise or lower the low beam. And that's how you adjust your headlight. Now, on the left side, the driver's side, you see that hole right there in the fabric. That's where you would put your screwdriver in. And on the passenger side, we got the same exact hole. Me, personally, I just decided to move that whole thing out the way. It's a lot easier to see where the screwdriver has to go. So, with the lights off, you can see me lowering the right side headlight to kind of balance out with the left side. Now one thing I would add here is the longest screwdriver I had for a Phillips number two is six inches long and that was not long enough. I really struggled to adjust these headlights. I would say find at least a eight inch Phillips number two screwdriver. It would make that job way easier, trust me. So with the headlights adjusted, let's take it out for a first test drive and luckily for us, it's dark outside. And yeah, not good. It looks like I should have raised the left headlight instead of lowering the right one. So let's go back to the shop. Okay, so out of the garage, I did have to adjust them a good three times until I got them to a spot where I felt like they were right. And as you can see, I could see much further into the distance. Let's go ahead and turn on the high beams and look at that. You could see everything, right? Guys, uh, I don't want to mislead you. Okay, remember, this is the camera that's very good in low light situations. So this is a bit exaggerated. It doesn't look this bright to me while I'm driving, but it is a massive improvement. Keep in mind, there's no street lights where I'm at. It is pitch black. And now as I'm driving through here, I don't feel like I'm in any type of jeopardy. I could see just fine. 
um, especially if you turn on those high beams it's a big difference but let's do a before and after the top one is a before in the city so there are some street lights and the bottom is after with no street lights at all and there is a clear difference even though this camera is a uh, a bit exaggerating like I mentioned before but let's go to the opposite end of the spectrum which is the GoPros and like I said they are way too dark so the top is gonna be before and the bottom is after you could argue like well they you know slightly look better and this is what I mean by even the GoPro is exaggerating but on the dark side because yeah it doesn't look like this in person um, with the new headlights it's a massive improvement I don't feel like I'm in any type of danger driving this car at night and the GoPro really doesn't depict that it's not helping the case but trust me guys if you uh, if you have one of these Altimas after you put headlights on you're gonna see a massive difference okay so as promised let's go ahead and cut into the old headlight and see what actually failed inside of here now unfortunately you got to cut into it and destroy it to get to the part the part itself like the dome that has failed is just screwed in you can see the screws right here so if there were some sort of an access hole there would be no reason to replace this whole thing uh, you could just replace the dome that failed and once you look inside of here you could see what the problem is this whole inside piece should be reflective just like the outside and you can see it's completely missing it's been it looks like it's burned away from the heat of the light bulb and it just looks like white plastic inside of there which isn't good for reflecting light of course and that's pretty much why these things fail so unfortunately it is what it is and this little plate is pretty neat because it's what actually blocks the light and if you notice your low beam has like a certain cutoff point where the light won't go above like a line and that's what this plate does so i thought it was pretty neat so that's going to be it for this video if it helped you fix your ultima please give the video a thumbs up as far as that class action lawsuit against Nissan, if you were part of it, I'm pretty sure it's done now. But that just means in about 8 years, you'll get a $11 check from Nissan. So like always, thanks for watching.